In Formula One, winning teams secure dominance through a blend of key factors. It's not just about having passionate drivers who align with the team's vision, although that's crucial. The real game-changer is the design and performance of the cars. Over the years, we've seen some incredible cars that enabled drivers to reach their peak and dominate entire seasons. Let's delve into the top 5 most dominant cars in Formula One history. In the 2004 Formula One season, Michael Schumacher made history by setting a then record for the most points in a single season, reaching an impressive 148, driving the renowned F2004. This marked his seventh and final championship in the world of F1. The F2004 shared similarities with its predecessor, the F2002, but with some notable changes. A larger rear wing, a redesigned rear suspension to reduce tire wear, and a smaller exhaust. The year 2004 brought new regulations, leading to a redesigned gearbox for increased durability to endure the entire race weekend. At the same time, electronic driver aids like launch control were banned. The dominance of the F2004 mirrored that of the F2002. The F2004 Schumacher, a formidable force, claimed victory in 12 out of the first 13 races, with a single exception due to a crash. Teammate Barrichello consistently secured podium finishes in all but three of those races. Ferrari secured the Constructors' Championship after the 13th round and went on to win three of the final five races. Reliability played a crucial role in the F2004's dominance, with Ferrari facing only two retirements, both due to collisions. Even today, the F2004's legacy endures, holding lat records at Monza and Shanghai, a testament to its lasting excellence. Now, let's talk about another Ferrari car that ruled the Formula One scene. Cast your mind back to the exciting year of 2002, when the Ferrari F2002 burst onto the Formula One stage, delivering a series of victories. This car claimed victory in 14 out of 17 races, boasting an astounding 88% win rate. It dominated the qualifying sessions, securing pole position in 8 out of 17 races. The Scarlet Beauty graced the podium 25 times out of 30, solidifying its supremacy. Let's compare this to the present, where Verstappen's 2023 season is considered highly dominant. However, Michael Schumacher's 2002 season stands as a strong contender. What made it special? Unlike Verstappen, Schumacher stood on the podium in every single race that year. The F2002, stepping in after the F2001, became Schumacher's winning chariot. Ferrari introduced a groundbreaking gearbox system, shedding up to 15% of the car's weight. This newfound lightness, combined with a lower center of gravity, proved to be a game-changer. While Williams BMW occasionally outpaced Ferrari in power, the overall might of the Bridgestone-clad F2002 proved insurmountable. The season kicked off with Ferrari's dominance, securing five wins in the first six races. The momentum carried through, culminating in flawless victory in each of the last ten races. The only stumble for the F2002 was at the Monaco GP, where David Coulthard's exceptional drive for McLaren interrupted Ferrari's winning streak. However, Schumacher effortlessly secured his fifth Drivers' World title in July of that year, while teammate Rubens Barrichello secured a comfortable second place in the standings. The Ferrari F2002 wasn't just a car, it was a symbol of dominance, precision, and an unwavering pursuit of victory. The year 2016 witnessed the dominant Mercedes F1 W07 hybrid, a powerhouse that etched its name in racing glory. The statistics tell a tale of dominance, 19 wins out of 21 races, an astounding win percentage of 90%. In the driver's cockpit, we saw a dynamic partnership reminiscent of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. While their relationship had its tempestuous moments, 2016 stands out as their most memorable season together. Mercedes entered the season as the pre-season favorite, with technical chief Paddy Lowe describing the Silver Arrows tweaks as mini-revolutions on their past title-winning machines. 
the season kicked off with a strong start as Rosberg claimed victory in the first four races. However, the Spanish GP brought a twist when a collision between Hamilton and Rosberg led to a double retirement, sparking fury within the team. The incident proved more detrimental to Hamilton, who found himself trailing Rosberg by a daunting 43 points after five rounds. Hamilton, determined to make a comeback, won six of the next seven races, with Rosberg claiming victory in the other. This surge propelled Hamilton into the championship lead as the season entered the summer break. However, Rosberg responded strongly, securing wins in the three grands pricks upon the return from the break. The Malaysian GP added a twist to the narrative. Daniel Ricciardo emerged victorious after Hamilton's engine failed while leading and Rosberg had to deliver a recovery drive from last after a spin on lap one. It marked the W07's second and final defeat of the season. The closing chapters of the season saw Rosberg winning at Shuzuka before Hamilton claimed victory in the final four races. Yet, in a dramatic turn of events, it wasn't enough for Hamilton. Rosberg secured second place in each of those last races, ultimately clinching the championship. In 1988, Formula One witnessed the awe-inspiring dominance of the McLaren MP44, a legendary car that etched its name in the annals of racing history. Let's delve into the details of this extraordinary season. The statistics speak volumes, 15 wins out of 16 races, boasting an astounding 94% win rate. The McLaren MP44 secured pole position in 15 out of 16 races and stood on the podium 25 times out of 32. The Constructors' Championship was clinched in the 11th round out of 16, showcasing the sheer supremacy of McLaren. The iconic red and white livery of the MP44 has made it arguably the most famous F1 car of all time. This fame didn't come overnight, it was earned in the wake of a strategic overhaul by McLaren. After a disappointing second-place finish in the 1987 championship, where they were outclassed by Williams, McLaren knew that significant changes were needed. The first big move was a significant signing. They brought in the skilled Ayrton Senna to team up with the two-time world champion Alan Prost. This powerful pair created a partnership that was not only filled with star power, but also intense rivalry. However, even the best drivers need the right tools, and McLaren dealt a crucial blow to Williams by getting Honda as their engine supplier. Equipped with the necessary tools for a shot at the championship, McLaren made a lasting impact on the 1988 season. Their dominance was clear right from the start, winning the first 11 Grands Prix. The MP44 superiority was especially noticeable in one lap speed, with both Senna and Prost setting impressive qualifying times. The Honda engine also showed exceptional efficiency in an era limited by fuel constraints. However, even giants can face challenges. McLaren's only loss happened at the Italian GP, where Prost encountered an early engine problem and Senna, leading the race, retired with two laps to go after a collision with Jean-Louis Schlesser's Williams. Undeterred by this setback, McLaren bounced back, winning the final four races of the season. Senna secured his first F1 World Championship, and the MP44 was celebrated as unbeatable throughout the season. To this day, it remains one of the most admired racing cars in the history of the sport. In 2023, the RB19 from Red Bull was a true powerhouse, rewriting the rules of racing and leaving a lasting impression on the season. Red Bull had 21 wins out of 22 races, giving the Red Bull team an incredible 95% win rate. It was a season to remember. The RB19 wasn't just a car, it was a legend. Even Lewis Hamilton, a big name in F1, said it was the fastest car he'd ever seen. Some argued about how it compared to the Mercedes W11, but one thing was clear the RB19 was a force to be reckoned with in the new Grand Effect era. It all started with whispers during pre-season testing. Max Verstappen, the star driver, couldn't stop praising the RB19, calling it an improvement in every way over the successful RB18 from the previous year. The big question was whether Red Bull could go above and beyond and win every single race. As the races unfolded, the excitement grew. Red Bull dominated the first 14 Grand Prix, setting records for consecutive wins. Verstappen was on fire, winning 10 races in a row. Everyone wondered if they could pull off a perfect season. 
But then came the 15th round in Singapore, and things took an unexpected turn. The RB19 struggled on the bumpy track, and both Verstappen and Perez missed the podium, a rare sight in their otherwise amazing season. But redemption was swift. Verstappen won the next seven races, sealing the Drivers' Championship with six races to spare. The turning point was the Qatar GP Sprint Race, the only race Red Bull didn't win. McLaren's Oscar Piastri took that one. Yet, the RB19 bounced back in the remaining sprint races, clinching the championship with six races left. Verstappen's achievement matched the legendary Michael Schumacher, showing that the RB19 was truly the king of the track in 2023. What other F1 car do you believe stands out as dominant in the history of Formula One? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. See you in the next video.